Good morning. I'm Sylvia, a member of the Board of Trustees of TUUC Congregation. As we begin our gathering, I respectfully acknowledge that I speak to you today from occupied Puyallup ancestral land. I pay respect to elders past and present and extend that respect to their descendants and all indigenous people. We welcome all who are joining us for longing for community, the hope for peace, and who are seeking justice. We are a diverse congregation, which encourages each one who comes through our doors to find their own truth and belief. We invite all who join us in search for meaning and community, guided by reason, respect for each other, and by love. The wonderful thing about this virtual platform is that we have the opportunity to welcome guests outside of our traditional geographic area. In the past Sundays, we have had visitors from across this country, even across the ocean to England. So a special welcome to our new friends and our returning friends from near and far. I invite you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Links to the video version of this service will be posted there this week, as well as on our other website. You can find all of our program announcements this week in our e-news and listed on our church calendar. And here are some of the highlights. Following worship service today at 1130, children are invited to the Kids Chapel with Nancy, with Nancy Slocum, our Director of Religious Exploration for Children and Youth. Today at 12 noon, join us for Stewardship and You a small group structured for reflection and dialogue on pledging and stewardship for TUUC. As a part of this year's pledge drive, this is an opportunity to come together in conversation and reflect on what our stewardship means in our UU community. Please remember to turn in your pledge forms, either online on our website or by paper using the forms you received in the mail. This Wednesday evening at 7 p.m., Reverend Linda hosts the final conversation and the series about widening the circle of concern, the report from the UUA Commission on Institutional Change. Some of the findings and are, some of the findings and recommendations of the report will be part of the discussion as well as considering how to adopt some of them for ongoing work towards creating a more inclusive congregation. See the e-news or church calendar event for a list of the readings that we will cover each week and for a link to a full report. Links for all of our programs can be found in the weekly e-news or via the events on our calendar. Thank you for your ongoing financial support to our congregation that makes all of these programs possible. Our staff who creates and facilitates the programs and the connection that we make to our connection. Now let us prepare to gather in worship. Good morning, friends. Our opening words today are by Tess Baumberger. I would invite you to join with me in saying, we traveled this road together um, at the appropriate time uh, in, the, in the opening words. You'll sort it out as we go. From the busyness of every day, we gather once a week to remember who we are and to dream who we might become. And say it with me now. We travel this road together. As companions on the journey, we share the milestones we meet along the way. Individual moments of joy and sorrow become shared moments of comfort and celebration. Say it with me. We travel, travel this road together. together. We share this journey across difference, differences of belief and opinion because we value diversity and because we care for each other. We travel this road, this road together. together. Today, as we take next steps, let us notice our fellow travelers, the burdens they carry, the songs that inspire their hearts. We travel this road together. As we gather in beloved community, let us open the holy havens of our hearts. 
let us share the sacred places of our souls. For we are pilgrims who share a common path. We travel this road, this road together. together. It is good to be with one another this morning. Good morning, all. T together, let us join in our unison reading brought to us by the Reverend Ken Jones. We light this chalice in deep respect for the mystery and holiness of life, in honor and gratitude for those who have gone before, with love and compassion for those who dwell among us, and with hope and faith for the generations to come. And now. Hello, everybody. My name is Nancy Slocum, and I am the Director of Religious Exploration for Children and Youth here at Tahoma Unitarian Universalist Congregation. And this is our time for all ages, a time when we have typically have kids come up to the front of the sanctuary where you can spend a little face-to-face -face time with one another. So I'm imagining all the kids out there from the congregation, all of whom I miss you all so much, <laughs> but I love thinking about you. It'll be good when we're back together again. So has anyone ever been asked to participate in a Facebook challenge? A Facebook, face, on Facebook, people sometimes will challenge other people to do things, like to post about something. And I was recently challenged on Facebook to the travel challenge, to post pictures, one picture a day for 10 days of travel that I've done. And it could be travel anywhere. It could be travel elsewhere in the world, elsewhere in the country, something local. Um, and I, I'll be honest, when people challenge me to these things, I often just ignore it. Like, I don't want to get sucked into that. But, but in this one, I thought, well, if I had to pick up 10 different travel pictures, it meant I'd have to spend time going through all of my travel pictures. And that's just been delightful, so much fun, um, going through and looking at the pictures that I've taken from all different trips that I've taken. Um, and it's been a great experience for me. So I gleefully accepted this challenge and started posting a picture every day. I posted pics from uh, a trip to Chicago I took with my partner. We went to see the Chicago Cubs play. I posted a picture from a road trip I did to Arizona where I got to hike down to the bottoms of canyons and it's just so beautiful there. Um, Habitat for Humanity trips that I've done to China and Guatemala and India and Zambia. Uh, just, it's just been so much fun to relive all these experiences through my photos. And when I got into my photos, I saw some pictures from a backpacking trip that I had taken. Oh gosh, it's probably about eight or nine years ago now. Um, to the coast, just a, it was just a short backpacking trip, just a few miles, uh, mostly on a boardwalk, pretty easy easy backpacking trip to do. Um, and I went by myself. And as I looked at the photos of it, and I had some pictures of my big stuffed backpack, I remembered packing for that trip. And what I did was, you know, I've got a mental list of everything I need to take with me when I go backpacking. And so as I gathered all my gear and all my clothing and my food and everything that I needed to take with me, I put it in a big pile in the living room. And then there I was looking at this big pile and I was looking at my backpack and I have a pretty good sized backpack. But I looked at that big pile and thought, there is no way I'm gonna get everything in there. And I thought, well, I've done it before. So I'm gonna try it again. And I started putting things in, but indeed I was right. I got that backpack pretty full and there was still a lot of stuff sitting on the floor waiting to be done. So I took everything out of the backpack and I took a look at that pile and I, I, I looked at it and I thought, okay, I can't take all of this with me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to have to leave some of it here. And I looked, I had packed a couple of books because I love to read. I've got time in the tent at night when it's dark and I can read. And I thought, you know, those books take up a lot of space and they're heavy. I needed to make sure my pack wasn't so heavy I couldn't carry it. I thought, I know, I'll take my Kindle instead. That's small and flat and it's lights up at night so I don't have to read by flashlight. So out went the books and went the Kindle. Um, I looked at the extra pair of shoes that I was going to take with me because that would be really nice to be able to change, especially if my shoes got wet. And I thought, well, 
camping, I'm roughing it. If my shoes get wet, okay, I won't take the extra shoes. I set aside my camera, which was kind of large, and instead just took my iPhone so I could take pictures. I thought about layering clothing to stay warm so I didn't have to take my big heavy coat. And I looked at the food and thought, what, how much of this food do I really need for three days of backpacking? And I, I set some of it aside, making sure that I kept coffee. That's my one essential when I'm anywhere, is that I like my morning coffee. And I remembered the time that I had forgotten to take coffee with me and actually hiked back out again to a local store to get some coffee and then hiked back in. So thinking about what was necessary and what could I do without and what was stuff that I just really wouldn't even use while it was my backpacking trip. And I finally got everything into my backpack and it was a great trip. And I, and I came back with stuff that I probably didn't even touch during the three days and probably didn't need after all. But when I think about that packing challenge, I, I think a little bit about how life is right now. I think in some ways we've been tearing down what we do in life, cutting back on things, right? Because we're at home with the pandemic and we're, some, some things we're really missing. But I found that there's some things that I'm not missing as much as I thought I might. Um, and maybe those are things that going forward as we, as I journey towards whatever the next thing is in life, uh, maybe some of those things won't come back into my life. And other things I have discovered are really important to me. I have, I've read more in the last year than I have ever read probably in my life, uh, maybe except when I was in school. And I, I know that I want to keep making sure that I make time to read and to discover all the wonderful stories in the world. So this is a time when we're kind of on the brink. There's light at the end of the tunnel, we've been saying, and that, that, that meaning that we're getting closer and closer to the end of the restrictions being caused from the pandemic. And we can see that light getting brighter, feeling like we're getting closer. And it's a good time for us to ponder, what is it we'll take with us going forward on our journeys? What will make our backpack full with what we need, but not too heavy that it weighs us down. That's our challenge these days. I wonder what's gonna go in your pack. That's our time for all ages. I will share with you the words we use to sing the kids out of the sanctuary on Sunday mornings. We hold you in our love as you go, as you go. May your heart be at peace as you go to nurture the spark of your precious life. We hold you in our love as you go. Take good care. Well, good morning, everybody. Here's an opportunity to think about the, the backpack that we want to create for our congregation and our world and invite you to be generous with what you have, what you can share. Um, so go online um, to the web address there or text using the phone number shown there and do donate to this congregation. I now would invite us to share the dedication of our offerings. Um, the Reverend Bill Graves brought us these words. She re read them along, say them aloud with me. We dedicate ourselves and our offerings to the work of this congregation, weaving a tapestry of love we call community, both within and beyond these walls. Good morning. My name is Alana Franklin, and I am the chair of the 2021 Pledge Drive Committee. We are happy to report that as of today, 102,822 dollars has been raised for 50 pledges received. A big thank you to the 50 members who have already made their pledges. You have put us at almost 36% of our goal of $288,205. This is the financial support needed to sustain this beloved community. To those who have not yet let us know what you will be pledging this year, please let us know that your pledge is important to us. 
please let us know what you can give this year so we can plan accordingly. The board will meet on the 15th of April for the final reconciliation of our operating budget for the 2021-2022 financial year. How well we meet the cost of the programs we offer and pay our staff will be determined by how close we get to meeting our goal of $288,205. By now, you should have received your pledge material in the mail. You can save yourself the hassle of finding a stamp to mail in your pledge form by visiting the church website and filling out an online pledge form there. You can do that at any time, or you can click on the link in the online to the online form now post it in the chat. Throughout the pledge, you have heard from fellow congregants who shared how their experiences, how their connection with TUC made their experiences possible and why TUC matters to them. Today, I am putting myself on the hot seat and speaking to you about what I have found here at TUC. When I think of one experience that encapsulates what I love most about TUC, the word that comes to mind to describe that experience is grace. One evening, back in the days of commuting to and from Seattle every day, I was coming from work to choir rehearsal. This evening, as often happened, the train or bus was delayed. I knew that I was going to be 30 minutes late to a one hour and 30 minute rehearsal. I was stressed, even though the tardiness was beyond my control. When I finally burst through the back door of the sanctuary and arrived at rehearsal, I was stressed and racked with guilt and shame. My arrival was met with eight words that washed all those negative feelings away. Words I have heard many times since and each time feels like a gift to me. Welcome, we are glad that you are here. The one word that comes to mind, I think that's very emotional. <clears throat> the one word that comes to mind that described that experience of grace. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Overcome with emotion, I got a little messed up with the words. The one word that comes to mind to describe that experience is grace. The word grace has many definitions in the Oxford English Dictionary. Grace as a Christian belief is defined as the free and unmerited favor of God. I was brought up in a Christian church as a Christian, but I have experienced more grace here as a member of the Tahoma Unitarian Universalist congregation than in all my years spent in a Christian church. Grace at TUC means welcome. We are glad that you are here. Come as you are with all that you are. You are accepted and embraced here just as you are. My experience of gracious acceptance is in the first, is in line with the first UU principle of the inherent worth and dignity of everyone. I think it is also in line with seventh principle, seventh principle, which speaks of how we are all interconnected and interdependent. I believe the two pillar principles, as they are sometimes called, can also be summed up as what is commonly referred to as the golden rule. If I am connected to you, then I ought to treat you as I would like to be treated, with grace. During this campaign, you heard from three other members of our congregation. They spoke from their hearts about what being a part of TUC has meant to them. I hope you caught all of their testimonials, either on the Sunday they gave them or in the special pledge drive newsletter. Laura spoke 
about the positive impact being a part of TUC, the TUC community has had on her life. She spoke about feelings of belonging and being a part of something greater than herself. Thomas spoke about how his need to connect with his faith and spirituality has been met by being a part of TUC. He has found purpose and replenishment by being here. Janet spoke about her desire to learn and grow and how TUC continues to provide her with many opportunities to push herself beyond her comfort zone in a safe and respectful way. TUC is the common thread in these stories. TUC has provided the container which made these experiences possible. This year, it has been proven that TUC is more than just a physical place. But the transition to a virtual existence didn't happen without many people working behind the scenes. Without those people, especially the staff of TUC and Reverend Linda Hart, the physical and virtual space for us to gather to have these experiences would not exist. There is no fairy dust on which all of this runs. Or as Cindy said in her pledge letter this year, there is no magical source of funds other than what you all pledge. This year's campaign hasn't been about shame or guilt. For one thing, it has been proven in many studies that shame and guilt are terrible motivators. More importantly, it isn't who we are as a beloved community. What we are is come as you are with all that you are. Give what you can because supporting this space, my goodness. <laughs> Supporting this faith and congregation matters to you. Do it for yourself. Do it to make the world a better place for everyone by furthering the UU values and principles. I hope through those who have spoken as part of this campaign, both in person and in writing, you can feel that together as a congregation, we weave a tapestry of love, both within and beyond these walls. We do so for ourselves, so we can be whole. We do so for each other. Thank you. Now let's take a moment to create a word cloud together. Creating a word cloud has been a fun way to see our collective wholeness as a congregation throughout the pledge drive. This has been especially important during this time when we are not together. Please take a moment to think of why you pledged to TUC. On this slide, you can see the questions and directions for adding your entry to the word cloud. Why will you pledge to TUC this year? To add to the word cloud, go to www.menti.com and enter the code 48 eight two four eight five nine then add your words now we'll take a few moments to watch our words come together
let's take a look at the beautiful word collage we collectively created. Thank you all for your participation. Let's take a few moments now to pause, to rest wherever we happen to be, perhaps lean back and take a few breaths. Listen to these words written by my colleague, Leslie Fales. All that we have been separately and all that we will become together is stretched out before and behind us like stars scattered across a canvas of sky. We stand at the precipice, arms locked together like tandem skydivers, working up the courage to jump. Tell me, friends, what have we got to lose? Our fear of failure, our mistrust of our own talents. What have we got to lose? A poverty of spirit, perhaps? The lie that we are alone. What wonders await us in the space between the first leap and the moment our feet, our wheels, however we move our bodies across this precious earth, touch down softly on unknown soil? What have we got to lose that we can't replace with some previously unimaginable joy? Blessed are you, spirit of life, who has sustained us, enlivened us, and enabled us to reach this moment. Give us courage in our leaping and gratitude in our landing. I invite you to pause now in stillness and in quiet together. And so may it be. Amen. This morning's reading is For the Traveler by John O'Donohue. Every time you leave home, another road takes you into a world you were never in. New strangers on other paths await. New places that have never seen you will startle a little at your entry. Old places that know you well will pretend nothing changed since your last visit. When you travel, you find yourself alone in a different way, more attentive now to the self you bring along, your more subtle eye watching you abroad, and how what meets you touches that part of the heart that lies low at home. How you unexpectedly attune to the timber in some voice, opening in conversation, you want to take in, to where your longing has pressed hard enough inward on some unsaid dark to create a crystal of insight you could not have known you needed to illuminate your way. When you travel, a new silence goes with you. And if you listen, you will hear what your heart would love to say. A journey can become a sacred thing. Make sure before you go to take the time to bless your going forth, to free your heart of ballast so that the compass of your soul might direct you toward the territories of spirit where you will discover more of your hidden life and the urgencies that deserve to claim you. May you travel in an awakened way 
gathered wisely into your inner ground, that you may not waste the invitations which wait along the way to transform you. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest. Return home more enriched and free to balance the gift of days which call you. Oh my goodness. It is a rich day together, my friends. I am feeling very touched by all that we've done already this morning. Um, it's so good to be with you, even in this quirky space that we inhabit these days. You know, I realized a couple of days ago that um, my most common footwear for this last year and a little bit has been my purple felted slippers. I've had them for, I don't know, three, four years probably. When they arrived, they were stiff to the degree that it was a little tricky to get my feet into them without like smashing them or doing strange contortions with my toes. When I looked at them a week or two ago, I noticed that the little chevrons of plastic material that were on the bottom that were meant to make them non-slip had tattered away they were mostly gone and peeling off uh, here and there. The, the slippers themselves have softened and are flexible to the degree that they're really easy to slip on and off now. Now that's happened slowly over the course of the year, day after day, small change by small change, unnoticeable for months, for even close to the year that I've been wearing them. As we approach 13 months, can you believe it? 13 months into this unwanted adventure of pandemic and distancing life um, as we, uh, uh, sorry, adventure of pandemic and distancing, life as we knew it has fallen away. And what comes next really isn't completely clear yet. May not be until we live into it. Seeing faces with masks on them is now completely normal. Remember a year ago when you'd walk into a store and it was startling to see people with masks? How odd it was. Not shaking hands with people even when you are nearby has become normal. Remember back in January of 2020, um, when uh, we started to encourage people to not shake hands and only bump elbows or, um, uh, you know, give uh, one another a, a bit of a, a, a namaste. Um, remember how awkward that was? How many times you reached a handout without intending to? We are living into a new normal, still almost 13 months on. But another new normal is beginning to appear, even if it's a more distant horizon than we would hope it was. With the pace of the vaccine distribution increasing, we'll be um, near, if not beyond, two million shots into, the, um, into our arms by the end of the first 100 days of the Biden administration. It's coming along. Washington state is now in phase three and the kinds of things that we used to do and take for granted, like eating out in a restaurant, for example, or gathering with others who are not a part of our household. Um, we can start doing some of those things. It's becoming possible for us to move back to something that looks a lot like what our life was 13 or 14 months ago. Of course, the truth is, at any time, at any point of, at, at any point in time, we can't really be sure um, of what we're moving toward and what the future would look like. Um, you know, it's, it's strange to think about what the future might look like. Um, and, and when we come out of this long, strange year, um, but, even in the best of times, we don't ever really know what's coming up next. Witness last January, a year ago, January, January, 2020. 
uh, or even December, when we could not have possibly imagined where we would be right now. You know, there's some things that we all know are pretty certain about, we're pretty certain about taxes and death as the old saw suggests. And we know that everyone gets older, children growing, adults aging, beloved pets getting a little less agile, needing more care perhaps. But the truth is that more is unknown about what our future is than we would like. And certainly we don't want to admit it most of the times. Our lives are far more precarious than we usually think they are. Our year this year has shown us that too. What we get choice about, honestly, and what we can be attentive to and plan for is how we will journey along whatever path appears to us. Whatever comes along, we can choose how we will move along that path, how we will move into that future. John O'Donohue, the Irish Catholic priest, had a way of um, making plain what we need on the journey, whatever that journey might be. This in particular, I think, speaks to the present moment, these words that Scott shared with us. A journey can be a sacred thing. Make sure before you go to take time to bless your going forth, to free your heart of the ballast so that the compass of your soul might direct you toward the territories of the spirit where you will discover more of your hidden life and the urgencies that deserve to claim you. In this still liminal time, this time of not there and not here, in this liminal time, it's good to take an opportunity to do as he suggests. As coming back into face-to-face -face community appears to be an actual possibility on the horizon, as whatever the new normal is going to be, starts to emerge. Let us be mindful of what choices we do have and what choices we make. It's never a bad time to pause for reflection of this sort. Some of us um, have practices that help us do that, you know, our resolutions at the turn of the year. Um, some people have a regular practice of opening up these kinds of questions. However we get there, that practice of blessing our going forth, the dropping of what no longer serves us and the tuning our hearts toward the hidden beauties that lie ahead and the capacity to discern what urgencies deserve to claim us. This practice is a very helpful one as, as change looms for us all. Now, it's that last bit that I find especially challenging discerning the urgencies that deserve to claim us. So much presses upon us. So many issues uh, leap up to our minds when we think of it. So many critical tasks. And indeed, life and death issues that call to us and invite us into the work that we need to do, the urgencies that deserve to claim us. Voting rights, for example, climate crisis, homelessness, the essential work of anti-racism, or even just that daily, the ongoing dailiness of tending to a family, the dailiness of tending to our wounded and beautiful hearts, the practices of kindness, the practice of loving the world in all of its mess and wonder, the urgencies that deserve to claim us. In this strange year, I wonder what have you learned? What have you longed for? What has fallen away from you? And what has grown more important? 
I invite you now to type into the chat the answer to one of those questions, the answer that was immediately obvious to you when you heard it. Type in the one that lit your spirit. Scott and I will speak them aloud um, uh, for a few minutes. And in addition to that, I encourage you um, to write them down, uh, to note them somewhere, put them where you can see them, where you'll stumble upon them regularly. There are answers. These are the answers that offer you a compass to what comes next. What you can, uh, what you will, um, what you can become, what we can learn about how to live a fuller life as the world opens and we discover what this new normal is. I've learned that life is fragile and limited, and that we can't guarantee anything. Longing for hugs with family. Longed for family, born with and found, and friends, and that has become more important. I long not to wear a mask anymore. I long to be with people again. Cooking for others. Maria, we're answering the questions that were in the, um, that were in the, the uh, chat a moment ago. Thanks, Nancy, for typing that again. Cooking for others, we heard meditation. Longing for the collective, uh, longing for collective experiences, not on Zoom. Staying connected, no matter what that looks like. I miss hugs from family. I miss being welcomed in person at TUUC serv Sunday service. Truth unspoken can be truth deferred. Ah, potlucks. <laughs> Learned, learned to value Zoom. I miss singing together. Sharing my baby more in his first year of life with all of us. Oh, we miss the babies. <laughs> I miss the face-to-face -face interaction. So much communication is in the facial expressions and the tone of voice. Longing for help with childcare, teachers, grandmas, and all. Missing coffee hour. Red mugs. <laughs> Learned how much I need others. Holding the babies of young friends, all of whom gave birth during this time. I miss you all. We miss you too, Ron. Uh, needing to shave with a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Missing the serendipity in the sanctuary. Patty says, singing together. Learned the importance of singing to feed my soul. Miss wearing lipstick. <laughs> oh, the things we miss <laughs> and the things that we hold. Michael, Michael. Misses, the <laughs> misses the sound booth. Bless. Looking forward to in-person performances, opera, plays, concerts. My friends, let us hold these things, what has fallen away, what has opened for us. Let us hold these many things in our hearts and use them to set the compass for what we are headed towards, what that new normal is going to be. We don't know what it is yet, but with these to guide us, these longings, these dreams, these things that have fallen away, the things that we know are essential. 
let them guide us in the days to come as we see far in the distance still, maybe next fall, when we come back into our sanctuary together, when we are together for coffee, when we are together for worship, when we can sing with one another. I cannot tell you how much I miss that too. You know, what comes next? What is out ahead of us, vaguely perceived? It is something to be lived into, something to set our hearts and minds to creating. So today, let us set our compass with intention and love, looking toward what we can create as the journey continues. So may it be, amen. As we have just come through a time of reflecting, I invite you to take a moment to set your intention. Let what came up to you, for you in answering those questions guide your heart as we pause in stillness together. So may it be, amen. Our closing words are from John O'Donohue. May you travel in an awakened way, gathered wisely into your inner ground, that you may not waste the invitations which wait along the way to transform you. May you travel safely, arrive refreshed, and live your time away to its fullest. Return home more enriched and free to balance the gift of the days which call you. Let us go in peace and in love. So may it be. Amen. As Nancy extinguishes the chalice, Let's read in unison these words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now our own Patty McPhee for our closing blessing song. From you I receive, to you I give. Together we share, and by this we live. From you I receive, to you I give. Together we share, and by this we live.